I'm doing something. Welcome to Psych IRL, and today we're going to be talking about operant conditioning. Let's review classical conditioning. So classical conditioning is the association of stimuli. Meet Bob. So Bob hears a song, he doesn't think it's bad, he doesn't think it's good. All of a sudden, Bob meets Linda. They fall in love and they get together. Linda gives Bob this happy feeling. One day, Linda says to Bob, Hey Bob, we should totes make this song our song. He agrees. And so now every time that song comes on on the radio, it gives him a happy love feeling. So in summation, the song gives him the happy feeling because it's related to Linda. Classical conditioning. So if you're still confused, check out a video I did in the description. I talk about classical conditioning uh, more in detail. But for those of you that do get classical conditioning, let's move on to operant conditioning. E.L. Thorndike is known for the beginnings of operant conditioning but it's more associated with B.F. Skinner. Classical conditioning and operant conditioning have a difference. In operant conditioning, the subject has a choice to respond. It actively does the behavior. But in classical conditioning, it doesn't. In the Bob and Linda example, Bob doesn't choose when to be happy or when to be sad. Definition of operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of learning in which the organism learns through the consequences of its behavior. B.F. Skinner made this device called the Skinner Box. The Skinner Box was a device used to teach animals and modify their behavior. Now Skinner put a rat in this box. This box has a lever, a bowl, and a closed chamber. If you pull the lever, the chamber opens and it dispenses food. But of course, the rat doesn't know this information. So being a rat, it walks around and accidentally it hits the lever. The rat notices, hey, there's food in my bowl. And it takes the reward. After a few more of these accidents, the rat notices that every time it hits the lever, food comes out from the dispenser. Eventually, the rat learns, if I pull this lever, I get food. So let's break down operant conditioning. Operant conditioning can be divided into two categories reinforcement and punishment. Those categories can be further divided into positive and negative. Reinforcement is defined as something that strengthens the behavior. Reinforcement can be positive, and positive reinforcement means the addition of a positive stimulus. And that's what you see with Skinner's box. The addition of positive stimulus is that it gets the food. So how does this apply to humans? Operant conditioning, IRL. In elementary school, we had spelling tests every Friday. Now, I hated these tests, but I knew if I got 100% on these tests, I would get a dollar from my parents. So the behavior was spelling each word correctly and getting 100%, and the addition of the positive stimulus was getting the dollar. The reinforcements can also be negative and that's the removal of an unpleasant stimulus. So back to elementary school. I actually went to a Christian elementary school and we were made to memorize the books of the Bible in order. I'm still waiting to use that in real life, by the way. Same thing with proofs and geometry. Anyway, back to my story. My dad would not stop nagging me. He nagged me until I did this three times perfectly. So the behavior I had to learn was to learn all of those books in order and the removal of the unpleasant stimulus was that my dad would stop nagging me. Operant conditioning also includes punishment. Now, punishment is used to reduce a behavior. Punishment can be positive, and positive punishment is the addition of an unpleasant stimulus. So I have these two younger cousins, which are twins, and they were over for a birthday party. I was in my room, and in my room I have this lamp that gets really hot. You touch it, you get burned. One of the twins comes in my room. I tell her not to touch that lamp. She touches the lamp. Her sister comes along. I tell her the exact same thing. In the end, they learned not to touch the lamp. The heat or pain from touching that lamp was the addition of an unpleasant stimulus. Punishment can also be negative. A negative punishment is the removal of a rewarding stimulus. Now, I was never negatively punished. I was mostly positively punished. So an example of this is when some kid does something really, really bad 
and he or she gets their phone taken away. They learn that doing something really bad results in the removal of a pleasant stimulus or their phone getting taken away. If you want to learn more about operant conditioning, I'll leave a link in the description. That's the end of the video. If you like it, give it a comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. Bye!